so I love it. Welcome, 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 uh, Neo Morai, formerly known as Omni Feudalism on on uh, Twitter, right? Um, still, still known as that. There's oh, somebody still, that has the still. There's somebody that's there's somebody that has the at Neo Morai account. What the fuck? How's that even possible? It... Okay, so um, in Greek it means new fate and then somebody just used it because more is a really common japanese and i mean it's like a really common um japanese saying i forget what it means Moirai? it's like somebody also had it but like the thing is like the counts from like 2005 damn that's fucked i'm very yeah. sorry that you've got name cuffed yeah i'm like i'm like how did i not do that like I, I used to like my my name used to be something else, but I don't go by it anymore. Uh, there's some, there's a lot of stuff that happened. I stopped uh -oh. streaming for a little bit. I you didn't like using that name. Dark past. You have a dark past that we don't know about. Oh boy. <sighs> it's, it's, oh yeah, super dark. No, um, I don't, I, I don't know how many people watch my interview with Aristocracy, but oh, I basically, seen it yet. oh, um, basically we go over how like, uh, like. I had a I had a different name. I used to go by the name Zai when I was okay. streaming, and I was basically just doing video games okay. and talking with. We don't gotta you don't uh, you don't gotta spill your guts yeah. if you don't wanna. But <laughs> oh no, um, I was and then I was like, okay, I joined a punk band. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna be the name that I'm using. Sick. And then started transitioning, and I was like, I'm not sure like how I feel about like using that name. Blah, blah, blah. Then like some real bad stuff happened, like involving like courts and stuff. Oh, and Jesus trauma going on so i was like i'm oh, not gonna really stream sorry. for a while yeah. um really sorry to hear about that that's uh extremely stressful um wait a second okay do you identify as a liberal uh it depends on who i'm trying to troll okay so is that a yes or a no um i will identify as a liberal in so much as i believe in the core tenets of liberalism i don't agree with neoliberalism i would say that i'm probably just a progressive okay all right a progressive okay because i was just gonna wonder, uh, every, i was i was just wondering yeah. about the punk band you know punk band and liberalism those don't really mix all that well um uh, you either you either have people going around uh doing like really sicko awesome song by the way sicko is like a term of endearment in That's my fine. community yeah i'm a sicko yeah. too it's all right we're all yeah. sickos here we we all are we, sick down here but somebody, somebody in my community took the sicko webcomic and they posted the the dude looking in the window. Mm -hmm. And he was just looking in the window at a mechanical keyboard, and, and that's like the official emo of my of my Discord. Wow. Well, I mean, I do yeah. you blame them? I love mechanical keyboards. I have a beautiful. I don't. Keyboard. Have you seen my? You don't have a wait. You don't have a mechanical keyboard, or you don't blame them? No, have you, have I have a mechanical keyboard. Look at this thing. Look at this. It's. I I have I have a Happy Hacker Mini. Happy Hacker. Yeah, Happy Hacker like Mini with like with a heckin' doggo. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. All right, sick. So, all right. Well, look, enough enough of the silliness, okay? I don't want yeah. I don't want to I don't want to keep you uh I don't want to make your mind all muddled with silly silly nonsense, okay? So, we are here to discuss a couple of issues uh which yeah. which pertain mostly to how we conceptualize trans identity and how we advocate for trans people in in various mediums and um yeah so uh there's a couple of different ways that we can go with this conversation i'm cool to, with whatever um my thing as you probably know is that i i don't really like um i don't really like the uh increasingly common argument that fixates on whether or not being trans is a choice and the reason why I don't think this is a particularly helpful or useful um, argument to have is because I don't think it matters. I don't think it, it matters at all. And uh, it's never been um, like like we've never been trans people have never been targeted because of some intrinsic trait. They're just targeted because they're gay. When people are, are horrible to trans people, it has nothing to do with whether it's intrinsic or extrinsic or not. It doesn't matter. They just don't like them because they're gay, because they've been told that gayness is equal to being perverted. And so I tend to push back on this idea that um, that uh, we have to insist, we must insist on, a, on, on rhetoric and, and framing that 
always denies the idea that any part of sexuality or gender uh, could at all be sourced from a choice. Out of curiosity, real quick, are you, or do you consider yeah. yourself like a determinist? Um, no, I'm more of like, a, I guess like an egoist slash uh, contractualist. Okay. So you you believe that 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 free will exists as like a like a standalone uh, subject outside of like the forces of the universe? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like um, I'm 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 gonna say this: if Einstein, if Schrodinger, if the founders of digital physics and information physics said that there must exist a free will just due to the nature of quantum mechanics, who am I to argue with that? I'm a music school dropout. Damn. Well, I don't have I mean, half the very... I don't have half the frame of, of of Richard Feynman. Well, that's fair. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, that's an appeal to authority here, going right out the gate with a with a nice appeal to the authority. But okay, that's that's interesting. I I do find it very interesting um, that you that like like I, the reason why I ask this is because it would it would uh, change the conversation pretty drastically if you were to say oh yes i'm a i'm like a material like a like a material determinist like i believe that like basically we don't really have any choice we're all just a product of of in unfathomably complex circumstance um yeah. i personally am what uh, i like to call a a determinism agnostic i don't really care um i don't think there's any way that i don't actually know if there's a way for us to know if free will exists um i i don't know if we can actually glean that information we might never know it might be impossible to actually glean that information we okay and as a result we will know i was going? gonna say we'll know we'll know free will exists when the person who is preordained by the universe to discover that free will exists or doesn't exist proves it according to sam harris but what if no one is preordained um then there, i guess sam harris is never like completely what wrong it, what if the universe is structured in such a way that it actually is impossible to know what if there's a fact but it doesn't exist within the what if there is a way to know that but it doesn't exist within the universe it could only exist from looking at the universe from the outside um at that point we'd have to go to like a 13 dimensional string theory we'd have to somehow yeah. we'd, get very we'd have to somehow go through yeah because what is it or um, we could just or we might 60s? just or we might just die and never know yeah it's certainly possible. i was going to say all intellect, all in intelligent life on in the universe just never actually makes it to the point of discovering whether or not true free will exists, right? Yeah, um, I mean that's probably one of the leading things for the um, for the Fermi paradox hmm. is that it's the nature of intelligent life to destroy each other or hmm. others. That's unfortunate. I hope that's not the case. Yeah. That would be very sad. I, I hope. I hope. I hope we make it. That or uh, the second one is just you know it's the universe is way too young yeah maybe okay so all right that was a very big brained way to start this conversation all right yeah, do you want to yeah. lay out like sort of your position on things and then i can challenge it or do you want to challenge the thing that i laid out before how do you want to go about this okay so in general um because this all started over like i wish red charlotte was here um yeah i mean red red the... charlotte i don't think red charlotte got back to me let me double check my dms in case i missed it um yeah uh, I know she had to work, so. Yeah, uh, let me just check and see if Red Charlotte got back to me. I, I admittedly didn't check my DMs before this. Um, no, okay, so Red Charlotte hasn't gotten back to me yet. So, I don't know. It's possible okay. that Red Charlotte will want to pop in at some point, but uh, maybe not. So. Yeah, if she, if she does it, that'd be awesome. Uh, no, like, because it started over the tweet where I'm, I'm ignoring the first part. The first part I don't even care about. I, I'm pretty sure I'm banned by the person that she mentioned if i'm not banned? it would be surprising that i got an unbanned uh, sorry should i bring up the conversation do we want to follow the the conversation here let me see let me bring it up yeah yeah go ahead okay okay so here we go so the original okay so this was something off of a uh looks like a, a like R riley grace roshong tweet or something let me see here let's look at the original tweet and as i'm sure everyone knows riley and i have a pretty had a, a pretty ridiculously strong disagreement over this exact topic um and this was the original post these are not my words these are red charlotte's words riley is an idiot and fundamentally b views her transness as a burden you can choose to be trans for a whole host of reasons one of them being political a trait does not have to be immutable to be worthy of protecting and then uh 
the response that you had was some big internalized transphobia here. How do you choose to be trans? How is this not leaning into the right away argument that people choose to be X? This is like saying, yeah, politically, I'm gay. So I think we could probably have a pretty interesting conversation about just that right there if you'd like to. Um, yeah. Like I, uh, though I don't, I don't necessarily endorse all of all of Charlotte's uh, language there. I agree with her conclusion. I think a trait should absolutely not have to be immutable to be worthy of protecting. And in fact, I find the position of basically only arguing to protect immutable traits to be um, essentially incompatible with any concept of liberation or uh, liberty. Um, and also, I, and I do, I, I do, I do also think it's a giant waste of time because if we want equality, we're obviously going to be covering anything with immutable traits, like. Well, be it skin I, color, be I it identity, so. be it anything. Right. Yeah. But so, um, um, I don't have any. I don't have any problem with the last part of that. The whole, the whole thing that like mm -hmm. it was is the word choose and then the word politically because okay. a lot of my streams focus on like local politics things. Okay. And we like the other day we were just laughing at somebody who before the Senate of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, because I used to live in Pennsylvania last month, moved. Mm -hmm. So still keep up with local politics there, keep up with Fair local enough. politics here. Um, this lady came in and legitimately brought in a bunch of left-wing uh, Twitter posts that she printed out off of her okay. computer, okay. joking cool. about microchips. Okay. And as proof that there is microchips in the vaccine. So with Ohio planning to prep a, a bill like this, it's kind of like... I, like, I don't know, there's, I want, I wanted to sort of figure out, like, what do we mean when we say that, like, you can be, like, I don't have a problem with saying that, you know, I'm not going to go down, like, the infinite recursive loop thing, because, oh not. my That's god. an like, absolutely yeah, insufferable just, and also wrong conversation, but okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't want, I, I already have, like, a, like, six energy drink headache, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want another one. Yeah, just, me like, neither. having my uh, brain pulled in. I prefer to avoid so, that particular angle of a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, so in general, like, that's, like, the way that I read it was, you know, you you could, tack, like, politically, tactically, you can be trans. Okay. And it was like, okay, but then, like, that kind of concedes a little bit of the point to the rightoids. Because they're Does always it? like, well, I mean, if... If you sit there and say, like, yes, you know, this 100% is a political choice that these people are making, uh -huh. then the conversation immediately shifts from, okay, so what rights do we need? Because, like, we're arguing for us to get Medicare coverage for mm -hmm. the first time when it comes to uh, trans health. So it's like, that's, like, it's something that is really important. It's important to me. It's important to everybody that I know in your chat. So uh -huh. when it comes down to it, it's like, when we say choose and politically motivate our choice right it's like uh -huh. what like i can't speak to what she meant by that uh -huh. but reading it and just seeing how many people also read it in that same context uh -huh. it's like i mean it, it is kind of you know given a little bit of leeway to that argument if you're saying you can uh choose to strategically do this Okay. Well, I mean, I I kind of disagree. I think that's a kind of an uncharitable read. But again, this is this is on Twitter, and and you know we're having the conversation yeah. here, which isn't on Twitter. I would argue that's a little yeah, bit that's... a little uncharitable, especially when you like say like big internalized transphobia. That's that's kind of a uh, that's a spicy way to engage. But but yeah, that's neither the... here nor there. Um, although but I will I will this... note that that is literally what Riley argued argued about me when we had that argument that was uh, riley's argument was that i was a bad trans activist because of a different point so i worry I'm, i do worry about the i'm gonna i'm gonna idea. keep i'm gonna keep my mouth shut that's fine because i i am too apparently so oh you are wait you are you are yeah. also an internalized transphobe um internalized transphobe and a horrible trans activist and blah 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 because i don't believe that you know you can well, act not, well you you're can... not her so that you know there's yeah. only one there can only be one good true one so it's like um i don't believe that we could quantifiably go through and describe exactly everything there's no way that you're like the incompleteness theorem dictates that not everything can be logically proven some things just aren't worthy of discussion so it's like sure i don't know 
I so, had I had no idea what the I didn't read the Riley screenshots, so I just like that's uh, but I was like, you know, like if if we're gonna be talking about like somebody who has like transness as a burden, like a little bit of that seems like unless if it's like explicitly out there, like yeah, I super hate being this way, then mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's I think it's a bit uncharitable to be like, oh, well, somebody sees it as a burden, even though, even though we kind of have our own little spat or had one back in the day. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that I I do agree that there's like again Twitter. Uh, you know, I have the imp, I have the imps code, uh, which which states no discourse, uh, and never mix up your discourse with your dunking, um, because yeah. once you do, and it always happens because Twitter is not designed for discourse. It will it will get inevitably bloody. But here's my problem with uh, with essentially shutting down discussions of uh, of like trans identity or alternative views of of mm -hmm. uh, transness that don't necessarily include appealing to sort of an immutable trait. Um, I think that here here's the problem. Let's just do a quick thought experiment. Let's pretend that right. um, we f spend the next ten years arguing for like basic basic human rights as trans people because of it because being trans is an immutable characteristic um and then we get that and then one year later a uh a a test is done that proves that being trans is a choice should we lose our rights no okay so then my argument would be that whether it is a choice or not doesn't matter that we should that fixating on whether it's a choice or not whether or not it's an immutable trait um locks us into a limited form a limited way of understanding our own transness and uh people who and i and i'm not accusing you necessarily of this but i do think that there are a couple of people online right now who are rather insistent on the idea that you must view uh transness as some sort of essential immutable trait um, in all circumstances, or else you are doing a bad activism, or else you are uh, endangering trans people. I mean, that is the entire smear that was done against me for the last, like, four or five months. And I think yeah, that that's very uh, small-minded and, like, thought-terminating. Like, I think that that I, is, is... And also, it's erasive. I think it erases people who have a different understanding of how their personal experience with transness goes. Yeah, I, I generally... Like, I agree 100% there with you. There's... okay no way to actually if somebody says that they're trans they're trans that's it like that is legitimately the only that is i i'm sure that other like i'm sure other people on twitter have some you know giant big brain takes on how to do it mm -hmm. but it's like even people who argue like okay somebody somebody thought they had a got me on on me because mm -hmm. i was like well i was talking about like oh well you have to have dysphoria to be trans and it's like well even if that's the case like dysphoria is like such a loaded word like right you could have dysphoria over anything and you can't like dis you can't like disprove like mm -hmm. that somebody just doesn't like specific words so it's right. like like that argument is is moot like there's no way to like 100 percent validate if somebody is real or not like that argument yeah, yeah. i think totally it's, I, but i mean such I think a marble that's, brain yeah but i mean i think that's something that commonly happens right i mean like there have been i've seen this argument many times arguing over um the ways that people interpret uh, transness as to you know whether it's a uh, a matter of choice or not whether there's an essential trait i mean hell like terps use that all the time you know they argue that womanhood is an essential trait and so i do worry about yeah. things that that demand that something be an essential trait and the way that i look at it is that i don't think that choosing that like a choice versus not a choice is a particularly good metric for determining whether or something should be allowed or not but rather that we should analyze its harm or its potential for harm or other metrics because choice versus not a choice well the fact of the matter is as we established in the beginning of this conversation we don't actually yeah. know what is and what isn't a choice it's very difficult to glean that information does that make sense yeah um like i think later on in that thread i was like you know, be interesting to hear your definition of choice when it come when it came to Red Charlotte, because it's like, like right now, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to figure out like what the best steel man for it would be. But since I don't have the actual framework of what she was working with mm -hmm. before she started to like arguing, 
whatever. Legit, like legitimately looking through her timeline, she's had to reply to like a thousand different attacks on her. Which, oh, yeah. like, even okay. So like, here's the thing: you could disagree with the tweet and be like, okay, yeah, I disagree with it, and I might be a bit spicy at the top, yeah. but like, there's no reason that somebody should be retweeting it and being like, you're not trans, lol. That's fucking gross. So what happens if right now let's just let's just do some yeah. some like interesting like this is no gotchas like I'm I'm genuinely interested in this conversation with you so it, well it's a, a debate it's a friendly debate so let's say that right now I was to tell you that I am politically trans that I have made the decision to be trans do you think that I should have any less rights than anybody else who is also trans or do you think I no. should be entitled to the exact same protections and and treatments that anybody else is yeah absolutely okay so then what does it matter if anyone says that they're politically trans or not if we're going to fight for their rights no matter what why does it matter if one person sees themselves as it a, a, sees it as a choice versus people who see it as not a choice okay so here's the thing when we talk about it with mm -hmm. the way that it the way that I was reading this, okay, mm -hmm. is politically, you can aim yourself as being trans specifically for political reasons. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when you're saying that you are doing this strictly for a political reason, mm -hmm. unless if the argument is then I am doing this for a political reason because I want to abolish all gender and not because I want to engage with like electoralism or deal with any of the bills, things that are going on right now, like, I could I could understand that where it's like I am doing this as a political move because I fundamentally reject gender and I'm a gender abolitionist. But like oh I hate to use a chud logicism here, but oh my god, he he's my senpai here. I, I love but right now, like Yeah. He was like, unfortunately, since you're mod I mean since you're a creator again, I'm gonna have to unmod you. So, okay. Unfortunately, in the world that we live in right now, mm -hmm. we have essentially Jim Crow reinstituted. I agree. We have India. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. we have Indiana arguing like, oh, you know, every like somebody could one day wake up and just say, oh, I choose and go in there. So everybody needs stickers and everything else. And it's like there's a way that we could talk about how identity is not something that is formed mm -hmm. like the instant you are born that it is something that you come through mm -hmm. is something that you come to realization for and it's something that in many ways you do choose okay. but also like when you're just like but also politically you should like you can identify as trans it's like that that is loading that that is loading that magazine for them okay I mean, I don't know that sense. I agree, right? Because, like, I think that I, I don't really – I would never describe myself as politically trans. But nonetheless, I also put – I am very open about the fact that I'm trans. In fact, I am make a, I make a purpose of being open about my transness. I think that is a political choice. I could be stealth, but I'm not. I choose to let people know that I'm trans, like, all the time. And I suffer a great amount for that. So I wonder if it is true that like something being a political identity makes like gives gives the right ammunition, then am I in the wrong or is any person who chooses not is any trans person who chooses not to be stealth is any gay person who doesn't choose to keep it in private? Are they then by stepping by bringing their identity into the public sphere into the political sphere? Are they not engaging in a political decision? to do that because again i could pass i i, I do like i i pass all the time yeah. i walk around all the time but i i choose not uh to hide my transness and the reason why is because i don't think it needs to be hidden i don't think that uh, i i don't care why someone is trans i care that their rights to express how they please to have health care as is needed by anyone else uh it, do, it does not hinge on the on such a choice you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, I. Yeah. It, it does. But I would say this, okay? Mm -hmm. So we chose, mm -hmm. both of us yeah. chose publicly uh -huh. to be out as people engaging within the political sphere. Mm -hmm. As trans people, we could have done it sure. in stealth. We could have not even 
bothered to go through with anything that we needed to. Like, I wouldn't have to, like, I don't need to grow Davy Havoc hair. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do any of that. But I would still be trans and also involved in politics. But I would not be politically trans. Right, but what's wrong? But see, what's wrong with being politically trans? What's wrong with me making the decision to openly talk about my transness? Because I have, I have a very good reason to do it. I think that there is a great benefit that comes from me, from people being able to see me, know that I am trans, to know where I come from, to know that this piece of my identity, whether chosen or not, is an important part of who I am, that other people uh, can succeed or, or can, uh, can find a way to thrive, uh, uh, and, and that being trans doesn't necessarily mean that you're like damned to some horrible life. I think there's value in that visibility. So, and I would there, argue that that in and of itself, it that, that makes me at least to some, at, at least in the most, in the aspect of my life, like in my private life, I engage with like, I don't know, four or five people who live in my house and a couple of friends and whatnot. But online, I engage with thousands of people. Thousands of people see me and they know I'm trans. So to the, to the majority of people that I engage with, I am politically trans. None of them know me personally. They don't have any way to prove that at all. But I tell them that I'm trans, and I choose to tell them that I'm trans, even though I could choose otherwise. Okay, so you're saying that there's no distinction between choosing to be trans specifically for politics and being trans and engaging in politics openly. Well, I mean, is well, what is the difference? Like, I would like to know what, what the difference would be. Like, you can't tell why someone chooses something. And I don't know that, I mean, it's possible. I mean, obviously we're, we're kind of like departing now from the original conversation, but uh, when somebody, you know, when Red Charlotte said like choosing to be trans for a political reason, like, like, I mean, like you can choose to be trans for one of them being political. I don't think I didn't, at least I didn't interpret that as like being like, I'm going to pretend I'm trans for this reason. Um, and if that, even if that were the case, what's the harm? I asked the same question, by the way, to someone who was uh, like sort of was trying to sort out like bath, like bathroom issues. It's like, well, you know, what if like, what if people go in the like, what if people who are pretending to be trans go into the wrong bathroom? And then I say, yeah, so what? What happens? What 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 is the what is the fear there? What, what's, what's the harm? The fear in the bathroom. Yeah, what's the fear in the bathroom situation? The I mean, bathroom... that's that's what the right wingers oh. talk about all the time. Yeah, so, unfortunately, if they get their way in Ohio, it's going to be that way next. I know. Year. It's um, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in general, I would say this. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a, a very good example okay. of a contradiction where Red Charlotte sort of disagreed with her own argument. Okay, because sure. Because somebody see. pointed out. Okay. Um, Let me. Because somebody pointed out that. Mm -hmm. Lauren Southern went around and said, I'm non-binary. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, so by that lot, so it's like, she did this as a political statement. Mm -hmm. So d does that mean that, you know, she, like, she's politically trans? And the reply was essentially akin to, of course not. So it's like, why not? at least, yeah. But, well, I mean. I don't care. Let her be, bi what, yeah. what's, what's wrong with her being non-binary? There were shitty non-binary people. Like I, I felt the same yeah. way. I mean, I, this was literally the same thing I had with Destiny. A lot of people felt like Destiny was um was was like a weapon trying to weaponize non-binary identity oh. or something. And I said, oh, I mean, I don't care. Like, so what? He's non-binary. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, Just say I, him pronouns. Okay, cool. So what? I I. I used to have an emote that was I can't believe just because I'm a queer I can't be problematic. Yeah, but I mean, right? That's the thing though, yeah. right? Like so what? Yeah. Okay, so call you, their bluff. You can call be, the right wingers bluff. Yeah. Let them say that they're non binary. They'll probably be happier for it. I'm okay with that. Whatever. They're bad I mean, I have to deal with the fact that Blair White is trans and I don't even though she's horrible and she advocates for horrific, stupid things and absolutely weaponizes her trans identity against other trans people, she's still trans. You know, so who cares? Okay. So who cares if people weaponize and say, I'm trans for the purpose of it? OK, great. Congratulations. You're trans. What does that mean? For um, you? What is that? How does that change the world? I don't care. The, yeah, the the logic is that sometimes it's genuine. Mm -hmm. But in Lauren's case of saying that she feels sometimes not binary, it's malicious. OK, but 
if Which? It's, if you're saying that but how do you determine if something like that is malicious how do you know that she's just not a I, malicious person who actually is non-binary i have no idea i'm going by i'm going by the logic that red charlotte used which is oh, why okay. i said like consistency in the argument that she was making which is why okay. i super wish that she was she was here yeah because it's I, like I if you so it yeah it's like if you can say that there's that you can be politically trans but then also later on say that there is a genuine political trans and then there is a non-genuine political trans well looking then, at this tweet here where do we it says charlotte says her position was not genuine and was publicly not genuine so i think what she's pointing to here is that uh lauren ad admitted that she was not telling the truth so that's different right that's different than just than us presuming that she's not telling the truth um you know in in my opinion uh if 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 somebody says like i'm about to watch this i'm about to lie and then they lie and you go well that was a lie you just said that was a lie um that's not that's very different from saying like uh she was doing bad things and therefore she can't possibly be non-binary i think those are two different arguments you know yeah, what i mean does that here. make sense yeah, it, it does, but I want to see. I want to see where this information actually came from. Let's see. Because this would go a long way into determining, like, if she did this for like a rebel media stunt and yeah, all I mean that was that was could... the thing that I understood, like, uh, her yeah. stunt. Like, she literally said this was going to be the thing. Like, she she publicly said, if I remember everything correctly, and I could be getting some of the details wrong. I don't really give a shit because I think Lauren Southern is a disgusting Nazi who's trying to rehabilitate her image. Um, yeah, and she's I'd be willing gross. To, I'd be willing to verify that, and I did during my uh, – during my Xander Hall uh, debate with Lauren Southern uh, conversation. Um, but regardless of that, um, you know, Lauren Southern, uh, Lauren Southern, like going online and saying like, oh, I'm about to do a stunt. And then she goes and lies to a doctor. Well, those doctors were correct to treat her appropriately. And they, you know, yes, yeah, the doctors so, were following everything so, from what I'm reading. On they, this. Okay. And they assumed at face value, they took it at, at self ID. They took it at face value that she was telling the truth. It was, it was none, none of their business, whether or not she wasn't or not. The rest of us knew because yeah. she told us that she was lying. You know what I mean? And like, but she didn't prove anything. What did she prove? She proved that like this particular place was willing to take someone at their word and treat them res with respect. Congratulations. Right. Yeah, she, she, pr she proved that doctors are genuinely helpful when, you go in in a country that has universal health care like that yeah. it seems I mean, some, like that's the exact yeah. opposite of what you wanted to prove probably yeah although I, i'm willing to bet because you said it was um because i'm just now reading the article here yeah I've, I've never followed lauren southern to the like her video series i've just followed um outbreaks of whenever she does something like shoot migrants with flare guns yeah or 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 you know uh, she gets busted on having worn a tiffany uh a tiffany bracelet that had an engraving of 1488 on it um yeah for like half of her life cool right yeah yeah or um shit like even when she left voicemails to crowd that were kind of um yeah. okay so she proved that it was easy to legally change your gender yeah. Okay, this is how you know that she's rich, though. It's really not. I'm trying yeah, to change. Yeah, she's super. Exactly. It's in Canada well, I mean, all the time. I mean, so regardless, like, I, I think that like going down the Lawrence Southern path is like kind of a little yeah. bit of a of a distraction from the main issue, right? The issue is, yeah. um, like, what what like so first of all, like, what reason do we have to assume that people are not being honest, regardless of why they, regardless of how they envision their own gender? Like, why? What first of all, why do we care? And second of all, what harm is it actually doing? So, like, if somebody comes in and they're like, "I'm, uh, I'm a politi I'm like politi politi trans," and you go, "Okay, so what do you want to do with being trans?" Well, I just want to wear, you know, I want to wear clothes of the, you know, that are generally associated with the gender opposite what I was assigned at birth, um, and that's their like conclusion. You go, "Oh, okay, right? Like, yeah, okay, okay, cool. cool, sick." And then they say, "Oh, do you well, need I help want on shopping." Yeah, exactly. So then, what's the problem? That's what I don't understand. What it seems like to me is that the the like sort of um, the the sort of ins the, the 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 idea that like there is some sort of um, like horrible offensive statement in in 
in even thinking about the idea that like, hey, maybe some aspects of being trans are a choice and that's actually okay. Or maybe all of it is. Who knows? We don't really know. And that's still okay. And you should still have your rights and you should still be treated like a human. Like, I think that that seed, that is what really, in my opinion, seeds ground to the right. Because basically by accepting their framing of the issue that it is a a thing it is a thing that you are stuck with that you are you are intrinsically this it limits us in other ways it seeds the ground to them to say that only if this is an intrinsic trait and if we can find a way that it's not and in a previous conversation we had i brought up the example of gay marriage right um that yeah. like uh that like uh you know right now um I mean, in our country's history, it has never been – there's never been a law that stated it was illegal to be a gay person. There are laws that say you cannot commit sodomy. You cannot marry a man. You cannot buy a drink for a man. You cannot slow dance with a, with a man. You can't – if you're a woman, you can't do it with a woman. Those are the laws. They have, they have targeted the actions, which presumably are choices, right? It's a choice. You know, you might not choose to be straight, but you choose to get married. You might not – choose to be gay but you choose to buy a drink to another man the government targets those choices because they know that that's what that's the choices are, are are what they can what they can prove that's all that we can work with so do you see how by seeding the ground into this world of like uh, of, of of just like choices are all that like intrinsic values and choices are all that we actually seed ground to them in the bigger picture that they get to determine oh well yeah well guess what we're only going to allow you to exist if it's a an intrinsic trait and then they can say well yeah sure uh it is an intrinsic trait to be trans but that doesn't mean that you get to have surgery because that's a choice you don't have to choose that unless you prove well i'm going to kill myself and then that means that you have to, then you get stuck in a position where instead of advocating for thriving or welfare or liberation you are only arguing from the fact uh from this from a position that is basically okay well uh if I if you don't if I'm not allowed to thrive in the way that any other person could thrive, um, you know, I uh, the only the only option you have is to like sort of focus on the mis the misery of being trans instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, trans people are really, really cool, unique people and they're not their lives aren't just categorized by misery. They are in our society because we're horrible to them, but it's not necessarily so. Right. Even to trans people who choose to get surgery, even trans people who choose to live openly. Like, for example, what if um, what if there was a situation that said, like, OK, we are going to pass full transition rights for 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 trans people. The government will 100 percent cover every single trans surgery, but you have to get them. If you want to be trans, you have to get bottom surgery. If you want to be trans, you have to stealth. You have to change all your all your um all of your papers and you you do not have any uh, choice in that there are and by the way there are countries that are like this if that was yeah, the case iran would be yeah, iran. a good example yeah, but yeah. if that was if that was the case then if jesus christ i would fucking be like go ahead take over all the buildings in portland right but but i no. mean but yeah. you see where you see where that's a problem right like because they're they're saying oh yeah yeah we don't have any problem with the intrinsic uh, intrinsic identity but you have to fit our definition of what a trans person is you have to fit you have to fall in this line and you have to prove yourself that you're some sort of intrinsic special case to even get basic human decency that's the problem that i have with that's the problem that i have with fixating on whether or not it's a choice um to to sort of like to, to sort of build on this have you ever heard of the idea um and maybe you envision yourself this way have you ever heard of the idea of uh trans like trans women being uh, women trapped in men's bodies. Have you ever heard that term? Yeah, I've heard that a bunch of times. Okay. A lot you... of people, a lot of people on trans Twitter will be like, "Actually, check out these MRI studies." And it's like, "Okay, I, I'm reading these. A lot of these don't seem to be that scientific." Okay, like well, that. that's fine. But but like, do you identify with that type of thing? Like, would you, if somebody asked you, would you describe yourself like in good faith? And they weren't like they weren't like a known conservative. Would you describe yourself as like a woman trapped in a man's body? Is that how you would describe yourself? I would. That's that's really hard for me to answer in all honesty okay mostly because like i'm i'm an outlier i was born with klein filter syndrome okay so it's well, so like then definitionally I, you're, you're you're not but yeah yeah it's like definitionally like i don't know if we're going strictly by the road it's like 75 percent of my chromosomes are xx so I, yeah i don't know yeah 
<laughs> my my but... is probably intersex as well. But but yeah. So if that's the case, then like, but that was the that was the predominant that was the for, for like the '90s and 2000s. That was like the predominant narrative that people would use to describe to describe being trans. It's like, oh well, you're like a a woman who's trapped inside of a man's body, and and like this is how we help them get out. You know what I mean? That you give them the body that they want. But like a lot of people don't identify with that, and it's funny because at the time there were a lot of people who, um, who you know tried to express that otherwise, and 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 you know there was a certain response, there were certain factions that absolutely responded in the same way that a lot of people respond to the idea that like there might be some choice involved in being trans, like I certainly don't see myself that way, but like I would hate if I was denied, and and to be fair that's how it was in the past if you were not a certain trans a certain if you're not trans in a certain way you would often get denied we all know about uh, i mean maybe we don't all know but uh j even just a few years ago oh blanchard's please. dichotomy. yeah i was gonna say please don't bring up like the whole like oh my god the whole if you're trans you're either actually trans or you're just a sicko pervert yeah right but i mean doesn't that sort of have its same like that has kind of the same roots right where it's like okay if you're really trans then you will be miserable you will won't be able to handle it and you will have to tra you will try to transition at a young age you will like men because you want to be as close to a woman as you possibly can and you won't like other women because that's not you know normal woman shit and so that was a way of saying okay well if you're intrinsically this well then this is the signs that you're intrinsically that and everyone else doesn't get it because those people are making a choice those people are engaging in a philly in a philia yeah. Their um yeah like like and that's the problem i have with the the like this idea like so what so what let's let's say let's just go into a wild world and everything that i am is chosen i choose uh like secretly i'm i i i'm i secretly d d i don't have a gender secretly i don't have any gender at all and uh i just choose to present and use she her pronouns Beast. yeah and all this shit um am i if if i'm not any less valid for that if there's no way that we can know anyway, then why would it matter? Why would it matter if it's a choice at all? Okay. Here, like, here's where I go back. Like, okay. Again, mm -hmm. we there are many choices that we make. Mm -hmm. When, like, even even making the choice to openly like admit to ourselves, like in some way, like you know, ha like my partner was like just came to me one day when we were still friends mm -hmm. you know not like you know friends friends like we are now yeah, yeah. i was like you know like i i really just don't feel like a boy and okay. it's like okay and i was like that's cool and then like a few years later it was like well you know talking with my psyche and everything it's like she kind of pointed out that every time i talk about my past like i always say like you know oh yeah i was like pretty like, like i was a pretty good girl and, like shit like that so we intrinsically make subconscious choices and then we make overt choices. But if we are going to say it is okay to overtly just be trans for a political purpose, mm -hmm. and that's where I'm really taking issue with that because that is where it does, in my opinion, fall into the line of being like, okay, well, here's some, here's some phantom that the right can point at and go, look at this. Here's some point that big papa fash can bring up and go on for nine thousand hours while sucking down a pack of cigarettes etc cetera, etc cetera. i think i beat him in the smoking but um <clears throat> probably yeah probably um but but okay so all right so then let's imagine a situation in which there is this sort of imaginary uh, political trans person what is that person like what is that what do we how do we describe that person what do they do what is their what is the thing that makes them worthy of like basically saying they're not a trans person nothing really i mean right. that was the whole that like that was the whole thing it was just like okay i want somebody to expand on this i want right. somebody to like because we can only say so much in 256 characters mm -hmm. so i want to know more about these ideas instead of mm. going through and you know just being like okay everybody else is being incredibly hostile 
all the way up to the point of you know saying you're not like a true trans person and stuff like that but yeah. i want to know like definitionally what do you define as like politically trans for red charlotte and then oh. it sort of like snowballed into that because it was like because based off like what i have now like it just kind of sounds like we're giving people more inform like more ammo at the state level but you know she probably didn't mean that and she probably had a lot more to say but we all got sort of bogged down with everybody else attacking her well, yeah. that makes sense yeah i mean well i mean this is the thing um it's really funny there's a couple of communities online that um are really bad about this if you even and uh, i mean a great example of this is that um a couple of months ago a a, a very good friend of mine um uh made it made a thread uh that um made a thread that that uh that that touched on this a little bit that talked about okay so why do we care about choice and they were immediately um just completely and utterly dogpiled for like I'm, I'm talking like a solid day over this um of just 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 the most abuse you could possibly see um and and all just because they floated the idea that okay so what if there are elements of choice should does that mean that we should treat it any any differently and i think that there is a a atmosphere around this type of uh this conversation that is uh, interestingly being set by people like big papa fascist do you really want the fascists to be deciding what the framework of the conversation is i would say no because i mean I again keep in mind that, uh that it is not like again in the catholic church for example it's not it is not it is not considered a sin to be gay did you know that it is literally I, I not yeah there's like it's, a ruling in the, it, in the catholic church there's there's also four genders in islam and seven in Judaism, yet mm. somehow everybody forgets these things. The thing is, is like, okay, I don't want it to be dictated by people like that. Unfortunately, yeah. oh. in the Midwest, I have to put the flag down and say, what is the most tactical way of going about achieving this uh -huh. while our state is currently being ran by, we have three senators who have not been in the state for the majority of the year uh -huh. because they've been in Texas co-signing bills that say that Texas was actually most of all of Texas should have went to Trump. Uh -huh. So we live in an area where it's, it would be nice if we could just say, yes, you know, choice, no choice. I don't care. Uh -huh. Everybody is deserving of the same medical treatment. Everybody is deserving of the same respect everybody is deserving of the same right to life liberty and uh -huh. pursuit of happiness but in the same way that inner city cleveland is extremely biased towards black people even though we have the majority population of our city is now black thanks to um white flight uh -huh. happening and uh fucking robert moses going through and deciding to plow i-90 through the majority of all black neighborhoods uh -huh. we have to be pragmatic in the way that we operate within the state well sure but like yeah. i'm not i'm not saying that you don't use whatever dirty tactics you need to of course i mean if i was if i was yeah. testifying before congress and the only way i could get a bill to pass was to was to go up there and be like oh yeah i'm um I, uh, a woman trapped in a man's body oh yeah of course i'm gonna do that obviously like who cares like obviously yeah. if you're talking to boomers but like we're not always talking to boomers and like no like there's room for other types of conversation <laughs> like there's room for lots of other types of conversation and I think there is a, uh, I think sometimes it's it's possible online. And I mean, I've seen this again, the reason why I even brought it up or the reason why I argue against, because I see it all the fucking time. I see people um, unironically just, just thought terminating when they talk, when people start to actually ask genuine questions and often it's inter trans discourse, but then there is this optical, there's like this optical statement that's like, no, you actually can't talk about any of these things ever because there's a chance a conservative might see you and then you would be a bad trans. And I, I worry about that because I'm like, well, we're uh, we're not actually addressing truths. We're not actually coming to meaningful like political understanding because we're being locked by whatever the conservatives decide is the framework on, on like some sort of federal level. And we're not having conversations that are valuable, that are that could be potentially enlightening or freeing, um, and we're per possibly even missing good solutions because we're afraid, because we're buying into the fear that conservatives want from us. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, I would, like, honestly, I would just say that 
if we're going to discourse about this stuff, we shouldn't do it on Twitter because I'm sure that there was so much more context that she wanted to add to that. Of course, of course. But we just can't do it. So, imps code, course, baby. Have... Yeah, and check, I check mean, the I, uh, I will 100 percent uh, not say that I don't bait all the time. Yeah, you. I think you do. I think you do. Don't lose like yourself 95%. in it. Don't lose yourself in it. Uh, okay, it's 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 a destiny. Like it started as a destiny parody. <sighs> I'm trying not to go that far. Oof, Oof. It's a dangerous, although, dangerous road. Listen, I'll, I'll keep although, my I'll keep my my filthy uh, degenerate reputation with regards to uh, destiny off the table here. But I'm just saying, the path of the dark poster is one that is easy to fall down. Uh, not to sound all religious, but uh, but it is indeed very easy to unintentionally become a dark poster. And bit once you become a dark poster, oh, it could become a bad, a bad, a bad state of affairs. Let's put it that way. Wait, what? What's what's wrong with saying there's more evidence for Bigfoot than the labor theory of value? What? Oh, um, today my bait po or yesterday my bait post was um, there's more evidence for Bigfoot than the labor theory of value. Am I supposed to be impressed by that? No, I'm I'm oh, just okay. saying that's all right. Congratulations. Um yeah, no, sorry. I I guess I guess just like I I find uh I find uh I find liberal shit posting to be cringe. Sorry, that's liberal shit posting right there. Uh god, it makes me want to die. There's nothing that uh, makes me want to die more than when somebody says something like, "Oh, uh value added tax makes me want to come." And then I just go, "You've never come in your life. Please just log off and never you, that is that is true that is true degeneracy it's this type of shit that i'm just like oh god it makes me sick to my stomach wait did i say would i tos something oh sorry yeah i meant in minecraft by the way oh no that's it's completely okay um no i i try not to do too much uh lately i've i don't know i i don't know how much you keep up with the lore of my community i, I know you have I your own community lore i apologize i try okay. i try to keep up with as many as i can but i i inevitably miss some some community lore for sure um okay so one of the like the reason why there's a lot of uh lib shit going on on my twitter right now is there was you know stardust does the chaos panels uh i am familiar with stardust i did not know that there was a panel that was run by stardust yeah, uh, one of them, Bastier, was supposed to be on there. And so it was, if I get 50 subs, I'll dress up as a femme Bastier. Oh, boy. Then Bastier had to drop off. So instead of not doing it, I just changed my name and profile picture in her Discord to Bastier and Bastier's Discord uh, profile picture. And literally dressed up in... I had a wig that was poofy. Then I had a, I think the, the technical term for on Amazon was, sexy librarian costume number six by Dream Girls. <laughs> oh my god. For the suit and tie. All right. So. Damn, this is a great bit. So that was a, yeah. you were you were just you were method acting is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um. I actually I I kept myself unmuted and the I introduced myself using the Bastiat intro and then I said um sorry if anything seeps off I just got my second Moderna shot. <laughs> All right, sick. Well, look, that sounds like a fun bit. Um, but yeah. Uh, so um, I don't even remember what we were originally talking about. Uh, before we started talking about uh, Bastiat. Yeah. Is it Bastiat? Choices. Is it Bastiat? I always thought it was Bastiat. He he. Per he pronounces it Bastiat, but in French it's Bastier. Bastier, yeah. Well, Bastiat, uh, listen, look, I think he's a nice guy, but he's got some cringe takes about Ronald Reagan, okay? Let's just put it that way. Listen, <sighs> I'm going to bust his chops for that forever. That was cringe. Maybe cringe. I was cringing. When, when, whenever, whenever you're talking to him, and this just might be because, like, I do some favorite wave graphics and things like that, because mm -hmm. I'm totally maybe not a little bit of a shield, shield for him. But um, so the thing is, is just always say that he's a man that you could do business with because he hates it when you quote Thatcher at him, especially when it's Thatcher about uh, Gorbachev. Oh, my God. All right. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind for the future. 
<sighs> well, look, uh, this was a, a, a really, really uh, productive and interesting conversation. Um, I don't know if there was anything we didn't settle um, or whatever, or if there was other stuff you wanted to talk about, I'm more than happy to. Um, uh, basically, no, I... you know, my, my sort of take is that I, I think there's, I, I think I have a lot of critiques for the way that discourse uh, is, has been bending, like certain queer discourse has been bending in certain ways. And it makes me a little, uh, a little worried in the long run. And, but also I, I am concerned at the, giving ground at all to people like big papa fascist who are just so stupid and we don't really have to like play their game we can reject it outright like uh like i mean i talk about like i mean we've talked about this with like regard to um to like i mean god there's so many different ways you could you could approach this again like i think one of the best examples is like is like we would hate to get we would hate to end up in a country where uh being gay is technically illegal but if you're a gay person who has a, a but like but like you can't get a blood transfusion if you have gay sex and you can't get married to a man and you can't buy a drink for a man but you could be gay you just you just can't act on it and likewise i would oh, hate that for that sounds to like a state of affairs it sounds like when i was people. in high school yeah i mean there's a lot of that but i mean that's the thing we've existed in this state a long time and i would hate for us to fight to be to to get to that state which we haven't really left and so i try to argue i tried i i am you know, I try to formulate positions that are more liberatory in nature, even if that means we have to sometimes push the the Overton window a little bit harder than we might immediately be comfortable with, because the loss the, the loss condition is very bad, but the win condition is very very good. You know what I mean? The loss condition, if we don't push, I mean, if we don't push the Overton window, then we stay in the status quo, which is that trans people are being banned from public. They already have their boogeymen and their phantoms and their everything. I don't feel like we have to do, you know, like, I don't feel like, and I'm not saying that you're doing this or anything, but I don't, I would, I, I don't think we have to become Blair White's, where Blair White's job is basically to try and dunk on every quote unquote cringe trans person that she determines is cringe because those people make trans people look bad and she's desperately trying to appease a far-right audience that doesn't believe that she's a person you know what i mean like yeah. this was most apparent no. on that panel she went on and so like for me i uh i would say that like um yeah there's going to be people who are who are cringe there's going to be bad people who are trans you can denounce them without having any having anything to do with their transness or whether they're legitimate or not so if somebody stood up and said i am choosing today to be politically trans i would say okay awesome good for you and that would be it. And if they did something yeah. stupid, like they tried to be like, well, I don't need HRT, so why should anybody else? Well, you're an idiot. And they're like, well, but I'm trans. Well, that's fine, but you're also an idiot. So Yeah, just because it, I've, I've always said this. If somebody wants HRT, great. Right, go right ahead. If somebody mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't make them any less valid. Yeah, I don't net, even think. Net space I don't think Spectre, people should be able to get what? Oh, what uh, if I said that sounds like Blair White? No, I, I think I think they're. This is a, a chat a d miscommunication. I think they're trying to say that the fund the, the fun fundamentals of the argument um, have their roots in the same fundaments as as Blair White's argument. Not that you literally sound like Blair White. I don't think that's true. Yeah, um, I could uh, be wrong. most I'm just trying to be charitable. I, I was gonna say most of most of the way that I've come about engaging politically with trans issues, at least on the state stage is um two weeks ago i did an interview with professor susan Stryker. she wrote the book trans uh transgender history mm -hmm. it's on its second volume okay and it's basically there is an extremely high loss if somebody goes through and attempts something in a state like mine but there's extremely high reward when people go th and try to do things in states like california and Washington, and then watch it spill out across the country. So the first thing that we need to do is get rid of the notions that like, oh, well, you know, people are in bathrooms doing like unkindred things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I unironically hate just even mentioning that idea because you are safer in a bathroom with any trans person than you are with an elected Republican official. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I agree, hundred yeah. percent with you on that. Like, especially Matt Gates. But um, but yeah, it's, it's. And then I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 then the other reason why I'm I'm being 
why but, I'm being such I'm being such a shit lib is um next week I'm interviewing Representative um Thomas from the 49th Ohio district. So it's like I want to talk pragmatism and I don't want to be like, okay, so like in the far future we're we're gonna have a law that abolishes gender. Oh well I, I like if it, oh, that's silly. There will never be a law that abolishes gender. Yeah. See I, I have but but again, then now we're gonna get and now we're gonna get into the big brain stuff. But I, I don't really uh like I don't know. Uh, I I I have not been done done well by the legal system uh with regard to being trans in my life. Uh I have seen like maybe one uh one distinct like right that was won by like for me by like legal battles. Everything else has been won by by networks of people ensuring that my needs are met and me ensuring their needs are met and so I, I have a different approach in some ways in that like while i don't i don't think that like legal battles are bad at all i think they're great i think it's fantastic when we can win anything for us but the problem is is that like um the, the law like i mean again like obama did a lot of cool stuff for trans people that was immediately undone and gone further back against by trump um, the way that our system is set up right now, like, it's really, it's really bad. Even in the best cases, you might fight for for ten years to try and win a battle that is then undone, uh, just a few years later or a few months later. And and so I think that for most trans people, like, uh, it's it's important that we develop ways of 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 convincing ways of caring. For, uh, not not no, sorry sorry. We develop ways of caring for one another and and convincing and meaningful ways of, of connecting with people who who can and want to help us and ways of countering the horrible messages that are put out against us as opposed to um as opposed to you know necessarily trying to like make some sort of i don't know supreme court battle that that might never even be heard by the supreme court i think that there are other paths that we have to take especially with how uh rapidly the right is accelerating I mean, we were just watching John Doyle, uh, you know, a relatively popular right winger, um, go just oh, straight, Mr. Ma Afraid of Plastic. Yeah, yeah, but mask off fascism, like ma mask off, just yeah, like one hundred percent. Like we need to have, in, like he was just arguing, we needed to have, like his words, not mine, internal purges. Like, like those are, uh, or sorry, sorry, uh, my my, uh, I I did say that wrong. We needed to have a long march um, through our institutions and get rid of these people. Was what he said um well that's like so... that's like his whole thing though if if you if like unironically he wears the uniforms of boogaloo boys he, yeah i know he tries does. to yeah, throw absolutely. a shout out to that yeah, yeah. of course yeah like, I'm his, just saying his entire that, like, thing is just yeah yeah this is they're, they're accelerating and like you're seeing this rhetoric being scooped up even by the the more ma mainstream people like this is you know i i'm very worried about that and uh you know uh yeah i don't know like uh, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know. The thing is, like, I just, I, I guess, uh, I worry that, like, there's no appealing to them. They are so convinced of their position that it doesn't matter if, uh, if we make any concessions. They don't accept any concessions. It's their way or the highway. That is the only way that they go. So I say, well, then why do we bother with concessions at all? Why don't we make a strong case for why we exist we are not harmful in fact we are amazing wonderful cool you probably and and those people out there there's probably a fuckload of people out there who are listening right now who don't know they're trans yet but they might because they see one of us talking passionately about that it's actually you know what it's actually an okay thing to be trans it's actually okay to not want to uh to uh you know have your body stay the same way as it was when you were born like those things are um are actually not a bad thing you know what i mean and like yeah there's going to be tons of people who don't want that but those who do who cares give it to them let them have it if 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 uh you know if, if something is like i don't know there's this idea i think there's like this idea that like if you say that like oh okay so if somebody wants to be trans let them be trans oh well you know now just anybody's going to walk over to the to the pez dispenser and get hrt really well, damn, I guess there's a lot of trans people out there. If there's so many people who desperately want to have a different body, uh, yeah, I guess, I, I guess, you know, I guess maybe that's a good thing that we're letting them then, right? Like, I feel like there's yeah. all of these things that are designed to basically 
uh, filter out people who aren't miserable enough and that most of our legal system is it predicates your validity as a trans person on how miserable you are. There's a really great piece that was written about uh, about this by Andrea Long Chu. Um, and it was very contra controversial at the time um, because she essentially argued that like, uh yeah like sometimes you you are still miserable after you transition sometimes you're just a miserable person for different reasons and that's okay that it's okay to transition and also still like be end up being miserable like yeah obviously you want to be happy but like sometimes it doesn't work out that way and you're not a failed trans person just because like you didn't get a like the the because srs wasn't a silver bullet and there are problems to having a societal framing of transness that is so married to misery does that make sense yeah um i was gonna say too like i like trust me i know about the legal system when yeah. i got arrested during the pittsburgh black Lives matter black lives matter protest um i got to in enjoy in giant quotation marks i got to enjoy the benefits of being placed in my assigned birth sex yeah, isn't that fucked yeah and it's like, oh, well, cool. And then in January, I was, uh, January, February, I didn't hear back about it. I didn't get a summons to go testify in front of a grand jury um, until April. And when that happened, it was, well, we don't have enough evidence that there was like a hate crime, but we can get them on theft and an attempted robbery. So it's like, okay, well, we obviously need some sort of legal protect protections. I'm glad that at least Pennsylvania has pushed those through. There's competing bills in Ohio right now to make amendments to the state constitution. One is the traditional, because Ohio's Republican ran state, Republican governor all the way down. I have absolutely zero praise for Mike Devine aside from how he handled the coronavirus pandemic. But right now it's... You either ban all trans people from sports and also um, you make people put up placards for restrooms mm -hmm. and you make it harder for people to get access to medications that they may need if they feel like they need to medically tra transition. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, again, like we both said, you don't need to medically transition. Yeah, not everybody does. But, I mean, yeah, like, I, I don't feel like uh, me or anybody else who doesn't get SRS is any less of a trans person. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't think yeah like it's just but i mean there are a lot of people who would who would still to this day argue that that like if you don't have genital dysphoria that you're like somehow less of a trans person you know what i mean like i don't like i'm actually like i have no problem with my genitals like that's just the way i am like i never have that's just how i am and early on and i remember and this is a bit of an age thing you know because i'm 30 like i remember 10 years ago struggling with that because at the time like if you if you didn't hate your your dick basically if you didn't hate your dick you were considered like there's something wrong with you like that was that was the thing that a lot of people were saying at the time you know what i mean so it's like i don't know yeah. some of that some of my uh approach to this is a little bit colored by that experience of being like oh wow like it actually isn't a very far throw from people just saying yeah well we're just going to move the line just a tiny tiny bit you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden nobody's valid and this person, it's okay to like, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to get SRS, well, you're not actually trans. So you don't get, you don't get any of the other stuff either. You don't get HRT or you're just a faker or whatever. I, I really worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I'm going to say like, wow, like you're 30. But... Yeah, I'm 30. Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess it's, it's old people here. I was born the exact day Castlevania three came out. So Wait, um, third, I'm 31. You're 31. Wait, what the fuck? Damn, I never would have guessed. Yeah. Well, I guess it's that uh, trans eternal youth, huh? 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 Uh, it's, it's either the trans eternal youth or the fact that my mother's half Singaporean. Because my sister's pushing 52 now, and she looks like everybody always assumes that she's in her 30s. Oh, are, are, is, are Singaporeans like uh, immortals? That's what I'm guessing from what you said there um okay so it's kind of like a general asian joke that like you know we're all we all look like perpetually like 27 and then oh. one day we just wake up and then we're short and have a fanny pack and sunglasses oh that i mean that's that's pretty poggers i guess you get you get the you get the phase 
and then you just click over. That seems that seems like a reasonable thing. I don't know. Yeah, all right, just... I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. This was a great conversation. I have promised my chat that I will watch uh, Holy Mackerel with them. So uh, if you have Ooh. any last memes, um, then uh, then hit me with them now or forever hold your peace. Uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, hit me with them now or, or, or whatever, and we can talk about it uh, before we do Holy Mac. Other than that, I'm going to hop off and do some Holy Mac. Uh, okay. I, I hope I hope this I hope this isn't going to be offensive to you. Okay, sure. Because I, I know that some people use it as an insult mm. or like try to try to do it. Mm. But when I was with Sansol on the panel arguing the Grapers, and then they had to bring in Big Papa Fesh because uh -huh. the Grapers were literally not doing anything, uh -huh. the first thing I said in response to him was, "What? What? What? What?" Like every time he would. Every time he would try to start a sentence, it would just be, what? Because wow. for, it triggers the hell out of him. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Listen, that meme has been so, oh, God, it's been so stolen. See, you know, Destiny uses that meme all the time. A lot of people use that meme all the time, and they think it's Destiny, but it was me. I was the one oh, who yeah, did that. A... I was the one who did the iconic thing. It's so funny. Yeah, I was the funny one there, and everybody fucking knows it. But it's all right. It's all good. We'll let Destiny have his little trinkets. It's all good. He can take his he can take his little consolation prize. Stolen meme Bro. valor. Yeah, I was the one. I was the one who what? Anyway, so the, yeah. The first what? The first water. I the, was the first water. He stole it from me. It, yeah. Uh, a big Papa fascist is also a massive joke. Big Papa Fascist is actually somebody I kind of think is okay to platform because he's so stupid. He's so offensively stupid that even his own his own fans get like embarrassed. Like he actually embarrasses like he embarrasses his own wife. I think I think Nut um, earlier in the chat was talking about how they I don't know Nut's pronouns, but talking about how they watched the debate. Literally, I was sitting there being like, wait, do you seriously think that a treaty ratified by Congress doesn't count as a government document? And he was like, no, it's a piece of paper. And I was like, what's your what? definition of a government document? A piece of paper that is fined by the government? Oh, no, 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 that's just not right. Yeah, that guy is, is, is painfully stupid. Like, just actually incapable of, of, of holding a conversation. Uh, did you see my debate with Big Pop Papa Fascist? Um, I actually watched that uh, in preparation for it. Hell and then yeah. halfway through, halfway through I, I messaged Brittany, and I was like, is it okay if I get drunk now? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see? Did you see his debate with uh, with Dylan, where he brought up my fucking uh, my genitals in an uh, unrelated conversation with me? Yeah, and he, and he well, argued that he argued I was lying about having an orchiectomy because uh, I was so strong and awesome, and I domed him so hard that I had to have balls. That was one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my entire life. I've never, I have never like that made me laugh so goddamn hard. It's also incredibly fucking weird. But it did make me laugh, and then he also proceeded to say that if you don't have any balls, you can't come. You can't. Uh, you can't have an orgasm. Was specifically what he said. Whoa, that's not true. Yeah, yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't have an orgasm if you don't have balls. That's what he literally. He unironically said that. This guy is unironically stupid. Yeah. He wanted to know oh, what's well, in my that's... pants. Yeah, he does. He he thinks I'm gonna. He thinks I'm gonna prove him wrong by sending him in like a like a nude selfie or something, and he's like, oh, yeah, score it again. But then his wife is like, what are you doing? Are you jacking off? Are you jacking off to a girl with a dick again? Ah! Like, okay, no, real, no, honey, no. Real quick, this is something that, that I've got to ask. Okay. Yeah, um, sure. with, De with Demon Mama as, okay. as the name. Um, do you support, like, because, um, like, I used, to, I used to be a big supporter of the Satanic Temple. Satanic Temple. When they were, when they were like, somewhat progressive. Oh, uh, wait, are they not progressive anymore? Like, I thought they pretty, I thought they kind of Um, were. okay, I left when I found out they had an entire, uh, group devoted to disproving DID as an actual disorder. Okay. So, wait. and then, and then, uh. I don't, I don't yeah, know. They what have does a... that even mean? Are they trying to say that, like, it should be declinicalized or, like. It, they want to remove from the DSM. They don't think that it is an actual diagnosis, okay. and they think that all of it's just complex PTSD. And it's like, 
All right. Um, that's oh, a, bit that's a bit weird, weird Champer. Yeah, that is a little right? bit weird. Yeah, yeah. here. I'll huh. post. I'll okay. post it in your chat. Yeah, that's really yeah. weird. Okay, that's strange. That... I mean, I didn't know. I don't know anything about him. So, I mean, no. I mean, I, I am, I am purely a uh, uh, original, original demon, a demon strain here, straight from hell. Uh, none of the, none of the, the, none of the, you know, variants. I, I, I was sourced directly from the fires. So yeah, no. I, I, if you want to know the story of my name, I've, I've told it on stream multiple times. So the mama part's easy. Uh, I'm kind of momish. Uh, it's kind of obvious in everything I do. I am like, amps do your homework blah 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 that's how i am i've always been that way i'm the oldest of uh, the oldest person the oldest kid in my family and i my parents had to work a lot so i literally raised my siblings so i just sort of became momish in general it was just like i don't know it happened it was a part of a circumstance of my life so that's the mama part the demon part is because um when i first came out um uh my family like my family has like a lot of like arguments like it's like a big thing in my family that we would do arguments all the time when i first came out a bunch of shit happened anyway i ended up at like a a, fa a family dinner and there was a big argument and it was basically literally like i'm not i'm not kidding you there was literally like five people seated on the other side of the table and then me on the other end just by myself and we were all arguing about the bible and i had a lot of critiques uh, for the Bible at that time because you know I had been distancing myself from religion for a while the rest of my family was still very very religious and I knew the Bible really well I knew it better than they did and um, I was uh, quite literally like <laughs> owning them with facts and logic out of the Bible with Bible Ooh. verses and all kinds of stuff I used to have this shit memorized and my aunt got so mad that she was like you know sometimes I really think that you're an agent of Satan sent to to to, to make us lose our faith and I was like and I laughed so hard at that that it stuck forever. And since then, I've been kind of like always into the, the like demonic imagery and stuff like that. So that's where the name came from. It was from that from that oh. event, and then just smashed it together with Mama. I I thought it was because you were the first of the little thin. Yeah, it could be. I mean, but let's be real. I was there before the Lilithin. Guess what? I was the one who impregnated Lilith. You all thought it was Adam. It was me. I did it. Based. Oh, also, um, Adam. real real quick, in, in your chat, Alora, uh, they want me to say something. I'll say it. Okay. Like, what's, is there something controversial with saying plural rights? What? Is that, uh, I, I didn't know that. I have plural kit in my Discord. Yeah, we do too. Um, I mean, I think there's some people who are really weird about it. Um, there was a big, uh, there was a sort of a, a, a big issue about it a couple months ago. Um. I think Vosh. Had oh, a bit didn't of a spicy Vosh had a? Yeah, and yeah, then and I then I actually now. actually critiqued his point uh, pretty pretty severely um, on a couple of fronts, but but it was you know it was amic relatively amicable, and I think he was willing to like reconsider some of the things that were said. Um, I I think that some people are really cringe in the way that they talk about um, pluralism because they don't they don't understand it, and therefore they have a like a sort of uh, knee jerk reaction and just think oh it's just mm -hmm. you know whatever. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I think so, for some people it's probably probably a little bit, whatever. But yeah. Uh, the weird the weird thing is is that I actually had um, I it, there was somebody that was in your chat that changed my mind on something that I had a little bit. Oh cool. And that was uh, drill uh, joy drill kill. Let me uh -huh. look at my whisper. Joy drill kill. Yep. Yeah, uh, because basically like I had I was on Camp Logan show. Uh huh like way early on completely you no know, like just returning to streaming still like the whole like oh wow i'm going like i i look ugly i everybody's going to judge me like mindset and who, who who's who had that oh i did that oh. whole like returning after like you start transitioning and then you're like okay i'm gonna start streaming and then like the li little inner voice in your head's like looking at oh, the yeah. camera and you're like oh my god i look you know, Oh yeah, I get that yeah. all the time, even still. And I've been yeah. I've been on hormones for a long, long time. So, but it's still yeah, it's hard to get I'm rid of. Officially, like it, I'm a year and two months now. So, damn, congratulations, yeah. Matt. Um, six. Years. But yeah, my 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 general take was, uh, when it comes to self ID for mental illnesses and things uh -huh. like that, that's one part of the tool. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people that will just say like, that's the only tool that you need but and i used to hold this position it was like well no because i know several pl like plural people now i've talked to them i've heard more and more of their stories so the thing is is after researching it more and more and seeing how much there was 
stacked against people uh-huh. who are part of systems. Generally, I would agree that, you know, a psychologist is 100 is, you know, 99% not going to diagnose you as that, even, even if it's 100% true out of, you know, just fear of falling into some sort of trap or thinking like, you know, they're going to be the next like civil maker or something. So, yeah. Hmm. But it's like, gen- generally, if like you have something like we use, okay. And I've said this before, like we use self-diagnosis literally all the time. Like of course. if we, have we to. there's no other sprain- way to do it, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. what if you, if you're, if you wake up in the morning and think, oh, well, I sprayed my ankle. What's that? Like it's just self-diagnosis. It is self-diagnosis. Yeah. 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 I mean, and the thing is, I, I, when I talked about this, you know, I said, well, you know, self-diagnosis is literally the first step to any other type of diagnosis. You can't like, I mean, I think we would argue that in most cases, like it's, it's not a good thing if you get to the point where you cannot, you're, you're like literally incapable of understanding what's going on. Like self diagnose we should encourage people to be mindful of their mental state. And if they feel like something is un- making them unhappy or making them feel unstable or whatever, that they should feel comfortable to go seek help with that if they want to. But that is advocating for people to be able to self-diagnose and pursue that. And yeah, it doesn't mean that like, uh, every person, you know, that you can just have, like, again, like, Pez dispensers for whatever drug or whatever, but there's reasons for that that are outside of, like, whether or not self-diagnosis is valid. I think self-diagnosis is incredibly helpful. Um, I mean, it, there are huge yeah. roadblocks in the way of, of, of getting, like, formal diagnoses, and, like, for me, uh, I I self-diagnosed at, uh, with BPD before I had a formal diagnosis, but my si- self-diagnosis was what led to me getting my diagnosis, which changed my life. Like, literally completely revolutionized my life me learning that i had bpd was a process of of having to self-diagnose of having to to read a blog that resonated with me and then this person being like yeah this is because i have bpd and i'm like what the fuck and so i think that's a very i think it's a very powerful thing yeah i think it's i think it's important that people learn but also i think it's important that we encourage like hey uh here's the way you know here's a way to approach this more healthy here's a way to do this without like you know like here's how you can self-diagnose in a healthy way that doesn't like lead you to going on to webmd and thinking you have cancer every time you stub your toe or something like that yeah um my my initial criticism came from my own personal experience because i thought i had bpd and it wasn't until i finally was like okay there's like legitimately nothing wrong with seeing a psychologist went there and it was like hey you know what like after after a few months of sessions it was just like you you don't have bpd like i know that like it kind of seems like it but you i have manic depression and you know and i have social anxiety and then i have a lot of gender issues with relation to like growing up and like starting puberty and you know growing boobs during puberty yeah. which like looking back on that was pretty poggers yeah well but, listen yeah. life is Anyways, a strange I'll... walk it is but yeah. i'll let you and your chat get to the uh the fish get to the fishy yeah we got to do it before the friday's is... over it's getting late but that's oh. all right listen this was a wonderful conversation neo moirai anytime you want to talk uh please hit me up um i think you're 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 pog as shit i think you're really chill every conversation we've had, watch your dark poster energy be careful don't don't stride too close to the abyss or it might consume you but other than that all i'm going to say is it was wonderful talking with you and i think you're a uh, a supremely enjoyable person to talk with oh yeah i always love talking with you um i was going to say at some point before i let you go we uh-huh. should totally do um we should totally do a politically provoked debate together Okay. Yeah. Uh, you you make it happen. I'll 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 go along with it. Oh. I I had fun on politically provoked. So if you want to do like a duo oh, team yes. thing, let's make it happen. That'd be fun as fuck. Hell yeah. Yeah. Human up together. Yeah. Uh, you guys enjoy the, way, the fish. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Neil Moirai. Thanks for coming on. Oh yeah. Thank you, Demo. Yeah, well, Always happy. Well, that was cool. That was a great conversation. I I really enjoyed that. I, I did you all find that uh, beneficial? I thought we got our we each got our points out and we were able to like talk about it like really good. Like I I really enjoyed that. I thought that was like a very uh see that's like that's the way that I hope that conversations like that.